Let's stretch forth our hands to our Christ and offer. Father, we thank you again for you have blessed your church exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. We thank you for a spirit of obedience. We thank you that the tithes and offerings shall continue to be used for the further in your gospel, to continue the, to meet the needs of the church, to support, Father God, all that you have for us to do in our community. So we give you praise and glory and honor for this which you have blessed us with, we give to you. We sow seeds. May your water, Father God, may your living water water it and bring forth continued fruitfulness and multiplication upon your members of the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing. Turn your Bibles to Colossians, to the book of Colossians. And we're prepared to read God's Word. Colossians, verse 3. And for those of you who do not have Bible, it will be projected in the screen. Let's begin reading with verse 3. We thank God... We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints, for the hope which is laid up in you in heaven, wherefore you have heard before the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bring forth fruit, and do it also in you since the day that you have heard it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As you also learn in Apparise, the dear fellow servant who is for your faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit, for this is the cause we also, since the day that we've heard it, we do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may work worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us to me to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Father, we thank you for this privilege and opportunity, O oh God, to sit at your feet to hear the word that you would have prepared for us. Father, right now I pray to just decrease within myself and I humbly bow before you to be used as a vessel which you have imparted in me these last few days and weeks. This word that you would have for us as a church. So Holy Spirit, rise up within me that the word of God may go forth with power and with clarity, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. But your word shall go forth and shall, Father God, encourage your people, build out your people, O oh God, that they may come to know you more. So we thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, rise up within each and every one of us. Open hearing ears and receptive heart to receive that which you have prepared for us. A banquet of feasts to partake of the spiritual food, which is the word of God. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may have your seat. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Amen. He is so good. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank my wife. I always want to do that because I very have that much opportunity to stand before you. But she's always been by my side. And she always kind of like when it's time for me to preach or when it's time for her to preach, we kind of just like uh, stay out of each other's way so the word of God will just infuse us. Amen. So she's uh, always been there. She's the mother of my children. I thank God for all my children are serving in a local church. I thank God for my grandkids. We love them. We adore them. We miss them for those who are in the States. And we're just so blessed that we're here with you. We're blessed with a church family that loves us and loves, and we love you and we love one another. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So here we read a letter from Paul to the Colossian church. And he was so surprised and was joyed when he heard that the Colossian church, through his fellow co-workers, he prized. That in the church there was faith in Christ Jesus and the love that they have for God's people. How many of you just kind of like just love each other, amen? Hallelujah. Right after service, we kind of like hang around, mingle, and just want to know each other, amen, for it's hard to do that uh, during service. So we try to hang around and know each other even more. In fact, several testimonies of uh, visitors coming to our church and, and how they testify that they feel so loved when they come to Abundant Life Church. And that's credit to you guys and just welcoming all our first-time guests, amen? 
And uh, I just want to acknowledge I met a brother named Roy, all the way from Samoa. He's in the Air Force, came from Korea, now stationed in Guam. So that's kind of like uh, what we need to do in our first time. Yes, kind of walk around, find out who they are. And Roy's smiling over there, and I don't want to point him out because everybody's going to look over there. But you need to meet Roy, amen, praise the Lord. And all the others who are wearing lace, thank you again for being here in the Bonnet Life Church. Praise God, amen. Hallelujah. So Paul thanked God for the gospel that was spreading all through the world. In Colossians, amen, and in the church there. So the gospel of the word of truth and all who hear the word of the gospel, we ought to bring fruit. And that the gospel to obey it and that we may live the principles that applies to us. So today I'll be talking to you on two things out of the scripture. First is to bear fruit, and second is to growing in the knowledge of God and His will. Amen? To bear fruit and growing in the knowledge of God and His will. So the gospel is bearing fruit in you. That's the question. Is the gospel bearing fruit in me? Is it making changes to me in my life? For in the same way the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the world, you and I have to make an impact in our community, in our workplace, even in our homes. But the gospel is being manifested in us that it may go forth from here in this local church, from your workplace because you are there, to your friends and co-workers, to your community, and to the nations. That is the vision of our church. So in Matthew 13, verse 18, it takes us to the parable of the sower. How many of you kind of like remember that story, the parable of the sower? Then listen to what the parable of the sower means, or the farmer that is planting. That this seed is sown along the path refers to someone. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom, kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their hearts. And the seed sown along the, this is the seed that is sown along the path. The other seed fall on rocky ground. It represents those who hears, who hears the word and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, it lasts only for a short time. When trouble and persecution comes, because of the word, they quickly fall away. Amen? And there's another seed. This seed falling among the thorns. The seed that falls among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word of God. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of witches choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good ground, good soil, refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop. Yielding a hundred, thirty times, or sixty times that which was sown. So the question is, is God waiting for us? Amen? Is God waiting for us to produce fruit? Or are we producing fruit in our hearts? Amen? For the seeds represents the word of God. It is communed in any manner to the hearts and the minds of the people. And the gospel has remained the same for over 2,000 years ago. Right now, I am like a farmer. I am sowing seed. Amen. And you are the soils receiving the seed. So the wayside, the rocky ground, and the seed that fell among thorns, and the good ground. It represents our hearts. It represents how we hear. And it represents whether or not we obey it. So the question again I ask you. Is God waiting on you to bear fruit? Amen? Do we allow the enemy to snatch the word that is being sown right now, this very moment, when you walk out these doors at the end of the service? I pray and I hope that you do not allow the enemy to snatch the word that's being sown this very moment. And there are many ways the word of God is being sown in you. Not only through the preaching and the Sunday morning evening service, but also for those of you who listen to radio programs and turn your channels to Christian radio and hear the sermons there, or you're watching TV and you listen to TV evangelists, so the seed of the word is being sown in your life. So there are many ways the seed of the word is being sown in you. So don't allow the enemy to snatch the word that's being shared to you this morning. Psalms 119.34 Pray for understanding. Tell your neighbor, pray for understanding. Kind of weak. Amen? 
You're allowing the enemy to steal the word of God from you. We must pray for understanding and to guard the word that comes from the pulpit. Amen? To pray for understanding so we can follow your teachings, Psalms 119 says. And I will guard them. I will guard them with all of my heart. We must pray for understanding and not allow the enemy to snatch the word that's being sown. Maybe you should bring a notebook. If you are one of those guys whose memory is not as good as mine, I bring a notebook and a pen and I write down pretty much as much as I can and what I can remember during the sermon. It is proven scientifically that the more you write, the more you retain. So if you don't have a memory that can just walk out these doors and preach every word when you go out to the service, you need to do what I do. Bring a notebook, write it down, amen, and take notes. Then you're allowing the word of God to remain in you much longer, amen, and you may grow. Also, another thing I want to suggest to you so you don't allow the enemy to steal or to snatch the word of God is probably you need to attend a life cell. In the life cell, we go over what is being preached Sunday morning or Sunday night, whichever message the pastor decides to send. Now, that's our subject in the life cell. If you're not part of the life cell, we encourage you to go there so that you can understand more of what's being shared on Sunday morning or Sunday night. That is the discussion. And if it's not available to us, then we have to have other books, The New Beginnings, the, the grow and other areas in which we can grow by knowing the word of God and knowing and bearing fruit. Amen? So don't allow the enemy to snatch the word of God. Pray for understanding. And when trouble or persecution comes for the word, they quickly fall away. This is the rocky place. This is the people who hear. They receive it with joy. But when trouble and persecution comes because there's no root in the plant, they quickly fall away. Amen? And some of us experience that. I have experienced that as a new believer. When trouble and persecution comes, you kind of like just fall away. We call ourselves the backslider Christian. Amen. Until God just brings a conviction in your heart to get back to the local church and get your feeding there. Amen. So trouble and persecution will hinder you from bearing fruit. But John 16, 30 reads, These things I have spoken unto you, that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world. He is telling you that when they come, when trouble and persecution comes your way, be of good cheer. He has overcome your troubles and your persecution. Here's Matthew verse, chapter 5, verse 11. Blessed are you when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner against you falsely for my sake. This is Jesus speaking. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. And I like this scripture, 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trials among you, which comes upon you to prove you as though a strange thing happened to you. But insomuch you are partakers of Christ's suffering, rejoice. That the revelation of his glory also shall may rejoice and be exceedingly joyful. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Because the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rests on you. Verse 16. But, a man, but if a man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in his name. Amen. So don't be surprised or think it all strange when trouble and persecution comes your way because of the name of Jesus. Amen. In the movies, God's Not Dead, and many of us watched that part one and two, a student was challenged because of his faith. Did he not go through persecution by his teacher? And some of the classmates even mocked him. But he stood his ground. And all through the movie... He stuck with what he believed. He knew who he was in Christ. He stood by what he knows, and he even studied many other books to prepare to defend his faith to the professor or professors of one and two. So how are you going to stand up against trouble and persecution? In your faith, are you built on a solid rock, which is Jesus Christ? Amen. Jesus says, hold on, I think I'm going too fast here.
Jesus says that when trouble and persecution comes to you for his name's sake, that you would have peace. How many of you need peace when we're being persecuted? I need peace. You need peace. The only persecution that I have received, or my wife and I, was very little compared to our brothers and sisters being persecuted in nations who do not believe in Christ. But those of you who are born as a religious person, you know what they say. I am of this religion, and I'm going to die this religion. And you're going to go to hell because you changed your religion. How many of us heard that? Probably my age group. The young people didn't hear that. Amen? But that's the, the most probably dramatic persecutor that I've experienced. Nothing compared to what we hear in persecutionchristians.com. Nothing compared to that. But the religious liberty in our nation, brothers and sisters, you need to uh, be awakened that it is being challenged by the leaders of our nation and many leaders in our own government. But you must remain faithful to what you have heard when persecution comes because of the name of Jesus Christ. So don't let trouble and persecution hinder you from bearing your fruit. The worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word, making it unfruitful. This is the person where the seed walk, falls upon thorns. The worries, the worries choke the word of God, allowing his people not to bear fruit. In October, I shared a message entitled Prevailing Prayer out of Philippians 4, 6. And it reads like this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And to summarize this message, in other words, be careful for nothing. Don't worry. Remember there's a song back in the 80s? Don't worry, be happy. Da -da -da -da. That's all I remember. Is don't worry, be happy. Because a German friend of mine who works with us always goes up to me with his glasses down, kind of like me now, and goes, Sergeant B, don't worry, be happy. That's all I can remember about that song, so don't quote me in any of that. But don't worry, amen. Don't allow worries to strangle the word of God. He says, don't, when we worry, we don't trust God. By worrying, we're telling God that you cannot handle it. Isn't that so true? When we worry, we're not trusting God, and we're not we're saying, God, you can't handle this one, not this one. No way, you can't handle this one, but you need to just stop worrying and trust God. Tell your neighbor to your left and to your right, don't worry, trust in God. I want to read this illustration. And it's entitled, It Depends on Whose Hand It's In. A slingshot in my hand is a kid's toy. A slingshot in David's hand is a mighty weapon. It depends on whose hand it's in. Two fish and five loaves of bread in my hands is a couple of fish sandwiches. Two fish and five loaves of bread in God's hand would feed 5,000. It depends on whose hand it's in. Nails in my hand, they produce a birdhouse. Nails in Jesus Christ's hands will produce salvation for the entire world. It depends on whose hand it's in. So as you see, it depends whose hand it's in. So put all your concerns, your worries of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches, riches into God's hand. Put your fears, your hopes, your dreams, your families, and your relationship in God's hand. Because it depends on whose God hand is in. So don't worry. Amen? Trust in God and trust in Him to bear fruit. And the second part to that is the deceitfulness of wealth. See, the world will say to you, get all you can and can what you get. This is kind of like what happened to the young ruler in Luke 18. How do I inherit earth? He comes to Jesus. 
obey the commandment. Never commit adultery, never murder, never steal, never give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother. And the young ruler probably kind of like shrugged his shoulders. You know, Lord, I've done this since I was a boy. But Jesus said, one thing you lack, sell your stuff and give it to the poor and follow me. And the Bible says he went away sorrowful because he was rich. See, the world would say, get all you can, can what you get. But yet he wanted to know how to inherit eternal life. But because he was rich, he did not bear fruit. Jesus gave him the answer, but he chose to walk the other way. So the word of the Lord was choked by the deceitfulness of riches. And here's another story. He who does not bear fruit is deceitful of riches and misses opportunity to bear fruit. This is another saying. The word will say, with all your health, get wealth. Work 12-hour shifts, 24 hours a day. Work all you, work very hard, get wealth. But later in life, they use all their wealth to get health. How's that true? Well, let's go to Luke chapter 8. The woman with the issue of blood. Twelve years of being sick. In verse uh, 43, it says, which had spent all her living upon physicians, and neither could be healed of any. She spent all her living on the doctors. She must have had a lot of money. She spent all her living with the doctors, 12 years seeing the doctor, going in and out of doctor's clinic, in and out of Memorial Hospital, in and out of the new hospital, in and out going to the Philippines, in and out, back and forth. Spent all her money going everywhere to get healed. But the Bible said it got worse. For 12 years of just paying for medical treatment, 12 years and the sickness just got worse. But she said within herself, if I will just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she, she must have heard of Jesus. She must have heard of the, all the miracles, signs, and wonders that was being performed around the area. And she said, if I will just touch the hem of Jesus' clothes, I will be made whole. Faith. Faith in her rose up. Risking all because she was unclean. In those days, you have to shout, unclean, unclean, so everybody will clear the path for you to walk. But she risked her life. She had faith to believe that if she would just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be made whole. And as soon as she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, the Bible said all at once she was healed. So if you're sick in your body, believe by faith that you're reaching out into the spiritual realm to touch the hem of his garment. It is your faith that will make you whole. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Not just tomorrow you'll be better. Not just one week, not just one year. You're made whole. And when he says you're made whole, that means your spirit is healed. Your emotion is healed. Your physical illness is healed. You are made whole. Go in peace. Because of your faith. Amen. So the deceitfulness of riches. This woman produced a fruit unlike the young ruler. And here's the last soil. He who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 and 30 times what was being sown. And this is the one who believes in Jesus, his word. This is the man who hears the word and understands it. Then when they receive and understand even more, 
He will produce a harvest 30, 60, and 100 fold. Like the women of the issue of blood. She heard of Jesus. And faith said, Go and touch the hem of his garment. One session with Jesus, and she could have done it the first year she was sick, but she waited 12 years. She produced her fruit and was made whole. So the difference and the results was not the seed. You could see the message remained the same for over 2,000 years. It has not changed neither today. But the difference was in the soil on which the seed fell. The gospel of the kingdom was presented as it is being now in TV, in radio. The good news is still the same, wherever you may have heard it. So the seed is the word of God. The difference now is you and me. Which of this soil represents us? Because Jesus did not say that the good ground didn't have any stones. Jesus did not say that the good ground didn't have any thorns. Because as long as we're in this world, trouble is going to come. Persecution is going to come. We're going to worry. And we will try to pursue hell, our wealth. But the difference now is that we do not allow those things to choke or hinder us from bearing fruit. Amen? Praise the Lord for that. That you still have may have stones. They may be torch in your life, but don't allow it to hinder you from bearing fruit. So let us continue to look within ourselves. Which of these do we fall in? Were there we be the one that the seed fell on the path? That when we don't understand, the enemy comes to steal the word? Psalms 119, pray for understanding, to know the teachings, and you will guard the word in your heart. When trouble and persecution comes, know that you are blessed, that you have peace, that the Spirit of God rests in you, and don't be ashamed. And when worries and the deceitfulness of riches comes your way to try to hinder you, trust in God to provide all your needs and give all your situation to the Lord and leave it in His hands. Praise the Lord. Give Him a clap offering. So the question again I ask you, is God waiting on you to bear fruit? For the Colossian church bear fruit in faith in Christ Jesus and the, faith, the love that they have for God's people. I like to say that the bottom line church also kind of like fits in this letter. For it is by faith that we started this miracle journey. It started from a living room of our pastors. Listen to this journey. From there they moved to an apartment complex, which is now Shell Gas Station, right down the street heading out to Route 1. Next time you're going to the mall and you're down this way, just look at the second floor. The, the Shell Gas Station cashers in the bottom. Right in the middle on top of that was a bundle life church. It is by faith that we continue the miracle journey to move to the Butler building, Butler Warehouse. Continue out towards Route 1, towards the mall. You see the bunny warehouse, the purple bunny, Barney, right? Barney, the purple warehouse. That's where we were. And we had animals that would walk around the back. And Pastor, we know that our friend just walked by because everybody said, well, So the miracle journey continues to where we are at now. Can we give the Lord a clap offering for our journey? We are so blessed that no longer we complain that we're very hot in the Butler building, but now the complaint is we're too cold. That's how blessed we are. But see, the journey continues, brothers and sisters. This is just the first phase. If you walk towards this way, you see construction going on for a children's church. Several years ago, when we started the church, we believed that we just do the sanctuary, the foyer, and that was going to be good enough. We'll do the other phase, be the Lord. But by faith, in this miracle journey, the whole structure was enclosed. But now, after a few years of celebrating our anniversary of being in this phase, your love offering, your tithes, are now building the classroom for children's church. They're also building rooms for the cross fire ministry. And the next journey is the asphalt in our parking lot. But then the journey does not end here. 
Our vision is to be a growing community of spirit-empowered believers equipped with skills for spiritual leadership that will take the work of the local church to the nation. And we're starting out small in the Reaching Out Ministries. Amen. Reaching out to our community. Reaching out to those who are clicked in to Reaching Out mini Ministries of Abana Light Church. So this prayer is also for Abana Light Church. But Paul also prayed to grow in the knowledge of God and His will through all wisdom and understanding as the Spirit gives. I'm going to kind of like flat, uh, flat, flow through it pretty fast uh, for time's sake. But we are to grow in the knowledge of God and His will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. It's verse 9. Knowledge is described as a spiritual intimacy that is born through having the true knowledge of who God is in a personal way. And the best way to get knowledge to know who God is and His will is to spend time along with God reading His Word. So God spoke to Moses in the burning bush. God spoke through His prophets. For us, God speaks to us through His Word. And this is the Bible. And it's in acronym form because if we read the Bible, you're basically reading what it says, Bible. Basic instruction before leaving earth. But we are in the world, but we're not of the world, so we need to read our instructions before we leave this earth. To grow in the knowledge of who God is and His will is to read it in His Word, to know who God is. For God speaks to us through His Word, and for over seven years, we've encouraged all the members of our church to do a time along with God. We issue our calendars, a book to read annually every day, and you check mark that, and Eli leader will sign off on it. So spend time alone with God. He may reveal you himself to us. He is Elroy, the God who sees all. He could be El Shaddai and all the redemptive names of God. When you read his word, he will continue to reveal himself to you. He's the El Shaddai, the God who holds the cattle in a thousand years. The hills belongs to him. The heavens and earth belongs to him. Or he could be revealing more of Jesus to us. As we are coming this season, that he is Emmanuel. God with us as we celebrate Christmas. Jesus is our Savior, our Redeemer, our Deliverer, our Healer. He's a great physician. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. When you stay, spend time alone with God, He may be revealing Himself to you in many different ways. God could be telling us about Himself, and God could be telling us about ourselves when we spend time alone with God. Amen? When we spend time alone with God, He could be telling us about that we are accepted in Christ. And if you go to the ALC 101, there's a whole list of things in which the Scripture is back that you are accepted in Christ. To name a few, I am God's child. I am Christ's friend. I have been justified. I have been complete in Christ. All that tells us that we are accepted in Christ. And another thing, we are secure in Christ, free from condemnation. I'm a citizen of heaven and cannot be separated from God's love. Hidden in Christ, in God, we are secure in Christ. So we have been accepted in Christ, and we have an assignment. In, in Matthew 27, it says, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord our God with all our heart, strength, soul, and mind. And second unto this is to love thy neighbor as thyself. This is our assignment as brothers and sisters. Our other assignment is to go ye therefore and make disciples of our nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them all that I have given to you, Lord, I will be with you always. I will be with you always. And the other assignment is that we are to love one another so that the world may know we are his disciples. And when you continue to read the time alone with God, you'll know that there's much more assignment that has God has given us. Just like Philippians 4, 6. Don't worry. Amen. It's for us to obey also. So we are accepted. We have an assignment. And that we are able when we read the word of God. For Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Romans 8. He has made us more than conquerors through him that loved us. And in Acts chapter 1, he said, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses 
in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, here in the island of Guam, to the nations, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. This is our assignment. And there's more as you continue to read your time alone with God. So Paul prayed to grow in the knowledge of God and His will. Is God waiting for us to grow? This is God's will for us. And it's in the acronym of SPACE. This is God's will for us, for us, is sins to avoid. It comes out of Galatians chapter uh, 5 to 14. And when you read God's word, there's more other scriptures. Ephesians, 2 Peter, or sins to avoid. This is God's will for us. And this is God's will for us also, promises to claim. He has chosen us to bear fruit. John 15, 16. And that we are accepted, secure, and significant in Christ. There's promises to claim that by his stripes you are here, healed in Jesus' name. He said he will give you peace. Claim his word. And this is the attitude we have or to change. You'll find it when reading God's word. Instead of just going to God and saying, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. We need to change that attitude and give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. Run it over. Shall man give unto you. Amen. Be a blessing. Give sacrificially. And be a light to those in darkness. The attitude is to forgive. Because Jesus forgave us our sin. How much more that we must change our attitude from being angry and being bitter to forgive because Jesus forgave me. To bear fruit and to grow in the knowledge of God. And E, a commands to obey, is to bear fruit and to grow in the knowledge of His will. Amen. And examples to follow. Space. When you spend time alone with God, you'll find this is God's will for you. Amen. If any example we need to follow, we need to follow Jesus' example. For he was accepted. In John 1.1, 1, 1, he was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, he said, God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But he was now revealed to him, to you in these last days. So in these last days, Jesus is our example. He's been accepted by the Father. When he was baptized by John, and in the Mount of Transfiguration, a voice from heaven came and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. Hear you him. And his assignment was obviously the cross. It is the cross when Jesus said to his disciples, tell no one about this vision in the Mount of Transfiguration until I have been risen from the dead. In Matthew 16, this is our assignment also, to take up our cross and follow him. And Jesus, the third time, he professed to his disciples about his crucifixion. In Matthew 20, he says, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests and the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death and shall deliver him unto the Gentiles to mock, to scourge, and to crucify. And Jesus was well able to endure his assignment. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Jesus shouted to the Father, I entrusted my spirit unto your hands. And with these words, he breathed his last. And in Luke 24, Jesus said, Yes, it is written, long ago, that the Messiah will suffer and die and rise from the dead the third day. Is God waiting on you? Is the gospel bearing fruit in you? Are you growing in the knowledge of God and what His will is for you? So in closing, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will reject thee. But this is what you ought to pray. Psalms 119. 
Help me to understand so that I may follow your teaching. I will guard them with all of my heart. So today I pray that you desire a spiritual intimacy to bear fruit, to grow to know who God is, and a desire to know his will. Paul was thankful to the Colossian church for the faith they had in Christ. And this is what Paul's prayer is to the Colossian church. And I would also like to pray this to hear the church in Abundant Life Church. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding to the church in Guam, to the Abundant Life Church. Then the way that you will live will always honor and please the Lord. And your life will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you have learned to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all glorious power so that you would have all the endurance and patience that you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking God the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who lives in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who has purchased our freedom and has forgave our sins. Let's bow our heads. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, as Paul has prayed this prayer to the Colossian church, that we may also, Father God, hear, receive, and respond to your word to bear fruit, to increase in our faith in Christ Jesus, to love God's people, to be a blessing one to another, to a blessing in our community, in our workplace, in our relationships, in our family, with our children, our grandchildren. So we thank you, Father, that you continue to encourage us that as we continue on this miracle journey in the Bottom Light Church, we take the local, we take the word of God from the local church to the nation. There is a purpose for each of one of us here in this place. You have gathered many people from different areas, nationalities, as a gathering place that your will be done in this church. We thank you for their faithfulness and putting their hands to the plow, finding their place in ministry, whether it be in nursery, children's church, praise and worship, security, just being a blessing financially, being a blessing in hospitality, just being a blessing for being here in this place. So we thank you, Father God, that your word continues to be in us. Let us be a people who understand your word be transformed by your word. May the life that we live be well pleasing unto you as it continues to bear fruit. So I thank you for spiritual growth, emotional growth, physical growth. Thank you for financial breakthroughs for those who are lacking. Thank you for healing for those who are ill in their bodies as we reach out into the spiritual realm to touch the hem of your garment. To claim your word that by your stripes we are healed. Thank you for the promises for us to claim. Thank you that you are our example. That we will take up our cross and follow you. So I thank you for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. Let your living water overflow us. That you will continue, O oh God, to bear fruit. In growing of who you are. And that your will be done. So I thank you, Father, for today. We give you praise, we give you glory, for truly thou art worthy that we acknowledge you as our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite the ushers to come.
For I received the Lord, the which also was delivered unto you. But the Lord Jesus Christ, in that same night, when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, as we partake of this emblem or representing of your body, we acknowledge that you are the once and for all sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who laid his life down for our salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the bread. After that same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do also as you often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Father, we thank you as we partake of the fruit of the vine and representation of the blood that you shed in the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sin. Thank you for the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus that washes us spiritually, mostly physically. And Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us in the cross of Calvary. You came into this earth that we may live with you in heaven. Father, you died our death, we may live your life. So we are grateful for the cross, and we remember that which you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the prayer. So I thank you, Father, if our humble heart, a heart that has been washed by your blood, forgiven of all our sins, thank you for the healing manifestation that is flowing even now from the crown of our head to the source of our feet. Thank you for making us whole in our spirit, in our soul, and our body. Thank you, O oh God, for our heart that seeks after you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may have your seat. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord.